Coach, last year Ohio State had trouble defending big plays against their best opponents. Ryan Day had to make a decision how to fix it. It looks like he made the right decision. Yeah, I think any time you have a certain part of your team that's not performing, you have to ask yourself why it's cause and effect. I really admire coaches, especially the way Ryan did it. They just went to work and got it fixed. This is as good a defense as Ohio State played in several years. Right. Number three in scoring defense, but they've also played two top ten teams. There's some teams with great stats, but they're not really playing anybody yet. Zero plays of over 40 yards. They're tied for number one in the country. And then five plays for the year for 30 yards. That's number two in the country. So the issues they had were big plays, especially against the Wolverines in Georgia. That seems to be fixed. We still have a lot of football left. Their tackling is outstanding. And then second, they use the term contested balls. They want to contest every ball thrown. And there's some great video out there where they've done that. Well, I'd say Jim Knowles, is, he has lived up to his reputation. Uh, let's look at some, some specifics against Penn State. Yeah, I thought this was really interesting, and I, this is a part of the game I love. It's a time that we, we, uh, <laughs> we've done this for a long time. So Jim Knowles has always been known as a very analytic type coach, you know, a very smart guy, and he spends a lot of time, like a lot of time, in that room. In his he might sleep in there, his office. Yeah. Though, yeah. <laughs> but he comes up the ways, and when people say go blitz the quarterback, it's not that simple. Right. You have to beat protections. And I just drew up an example because they did this against Penn State. A six-man protection, everybody in the country runs that. And six are this. you got five offensive linemen and a tailback, so you have six people protecting. Always remember the tailback is a tailback. You don't want to get him caught on big defense alignment. You want him to block a linebacker, and then if the linebacker doesn't come, you hear the term check down. He's the actual check down. So in a six-man protection, there's a man side, there's a zone side. I'm going to get to this in a minute. And then there's a tailback. You block a linebacker. So the, the one that I have drawn up here is one you're going to see on video. The left side is your zone side, and it's going to be three for three. So three for three. The center, the guard, and the tackle have three, three, these three defenders right here. On the man side, this is going to be the man side, 90 plus percent of the time it's where the tailback is. That's going to be man protection. They're on him because once again, they don't want the tailback caught on one of the right. defensive linemen. Right. That's 290 pounds. That's 220. He's 220. Keep the matchup. Let's put a boxer on him and a boxer on him. That's six man protection. So let's go, if you're Jim Knowles, let's go beat it. How right. do we beat it? They beat it by attacking the man side and actually pick it. So they're going to rush the deep Sam linebacker. Tailback has him. They're going to rush these two, but they're going to take Eichenberg here, and he's such a brilliant player. They're going to hit, and they're going to actually pick that guard. The tackle is going to pick the tackle. And what that does is that frees him up for a twist. You're going to see on the videotape, he actually grabs the shirt of the right. guard right. so the guard can't bump back and block him. So everybody says, okay, that's six-man pressure. No, it's not. This guy came, and actually we call that blitz engage. Right. If he ran a pass, he was going to run with him. So it gives the appearance of six-man pressure. So you're bringing one, you're bringing two, you're bringing three. He dropped, right. and you're bringing four. It looks like six-man pressure, six-man's high risk. They only brought four. And yet every time they ran the game against Penn State, that defensive end was clean because of the effort and technique of the Mike linebacker. And I would say to you, what's changed is they're doing this, but they're also doing this, which they really weren't doing a year ago. You know, that was, was, was missing. The good thing about that, you can tell they worked on it. No doubt. And as of now, they fixed it. All right, Jerry, as we saw on the board, there's a lot to unpack here. I want you to watch the center and the quarterback. They're pointing to number 35. That tells everyone, not just the offense line, who their center is going to. They're going to number 35. But it also tells the tailback, you now have number 22. Right. That's your guy. Right. As this splits unfolds, I want you to really focus on number 35, Eichenberg. First of all, his effort, but his technique. He is going to pick number 77, the man side. The 73's guy starts to go inside. Right. The defensive end. His responsibility is to bump 77 back off. He can't. You know why? Eichenberg not only picks him, but he grabs him. Yeah, the center has no idea that he's supposed to bounce because 77 can't bump him back in. Now, one amazing thing here. This looks like a six-man blitz. You got four defensive linemen, and you got two linebackers. Right. Looks like a six. Looks like a high six-man pressure is a high risk because not many people left if someone breaks through. This is only four-man pressure. 
Watch Steel Chambers. He's engaged rushing. Right. That means you have number 13. Right. You have a man-to-man. -man. Watch the defensive end, JT. He's dropping into coverage. There's only four guys right. rushing. Right. They're eating up six people with four rushers. And as a result, Drew Aller, watch his panic. He gets the ball out so fast, no chance of completion.